I'm Neil McRae and I bought this notepad for Kate because I thought it would go well with her uniform. But then I thought, no, Kate's never going to take notes. She shoots from the hip. And, and that's what we like it for. Um, I've got some notes today though because I've got some important information and I didn't want to miss anything. So until recently I was a mental health lecturer but I had enough of cancel culture and decided to change career and I'm now an officer of the Workers of England Trade Union. And I've got a soft spot for Chichester. Some of you may know Graylingwell Mental Hospital. About 10 years ago, I contributed to the Community History Project, which studied the hospital from the perspective of former patients and staff. Hundreds of nurses and ancillary workers looked after the mentally ill patients, never really appreciated, working out of sight, out of mind of society. And we can say the same of the care home workforce, who were targeted by the government for the first occupational mandate. I sat for 11 years on an NHS ethics committee. And I couldn't have foreseen this complete departure from established standards of regulatory safeguards, scientific logic, evidence-based practice, informed consent, and employment rights. No jab, no job is an affront to a free society. Does anyone out there support this? We are fighting back. The workers of England is confronting managers and HR bureaucrats with the truth. They are collaborators like the professional middle class in Nazi Germany, who later claimed they were just following orders. In practical terms, how can we help? Well, as a trade union, we must work within the law. And when the government passed this abhorrent, dehumanizing statute in July, it couldn't bypass the Equality Act. There must be exemptions. Vaccination, which employers present as a reasonable management instruction, is a work-related activity and therefore comes under the terms of disability protection. The employer has a duty of care to employees if a worker has genuine health concerns about taking a serious... Do you want to come and say that on the microphone? You'd fit well in Nazi Germany. Just go back 70 years, you'll find yourself at home there. The employer, before I was rudely interrupted, has a duty of care to employees. And if a worker has genuine health concerns about taking a series of injections as required for the job, an individual risk assessment should be done a reasonable adjustment can be made. But the employer doesn't really need to do anything. Simply record the worker as exempt. Let them get on with their work. Sadly, many employers are too bloody-minded. They insist on workers submitting the Department of Health's exemption form, which is deliberately as restrictive as possible. To qualify as exempt under the government guidelines, you must be currently pregnant, have a severe learning disability, or be in terminal care. They're trolling us. From the Workers of England standpoint, anyone, anyone is potentially exempt. And sometimes members say to me, but I'm fit and healthy. How can I claim exemption? And they say, well, I'm worried about an inadequately tested treatment and adverse reactions. But these are health reasons. If you're medically at risk, you have a medical justification to defer. The Workers of England Certificate of Ex Exemption, devised with legal expertise, complies with the vaccine mandate and the Equality Act. However, 
many of these certificates, based on the members' individual per medical history, are being rejected by employers because it's not the government form and not assessed by a GP. Well, we don't encourage our members to seek exemption from a doctor, not only because GPs have been told not to provide this, but also due to a conflict of interest. GPs are paid for each jab and given bonuses for reaching targets. A scandalous conflict of interest. In hearings, the Workers of England explains to ignorant employers the difference between guidelines and the law. If a member has submitted a valid exemption, we tell managers, refuse this at your peril. We will take unfair dismissal cases to an employment tribunal, which is a court of law. A court will focus on the law, not guidelines which can change at the flick of a pen in Whitehall. At a tribunal, two questions will be asked. One, did the employer submit an exemption that complies with legal requirements? Two, if so, why did the employer reject this and sack the employee? The damages from such cases in their thousands could be colossal. In the new year, the mandate is likely to be expanded to the NHS and we're expecting a tsunami of new members. But meanwhile, those care home workers who relented to pressure, who got the two jabs, will find this is not enough. They will revert to unvaccinated status when the booster is enforced. The law doesn't need to change for this. It simply says the full course that enables the third, fourth, fifth doses to be mandatory. So please, to finish off, if you know anyone whose job is at risk from this pseudo-medical fascism, get them to join the workers of England. The conventional unions are no use. Unison, for example, know that this policy is decimating care homes, yet they deny support to members threatened with dismissal. These unions are cheerleaders for masks, lockdown and the vaccine regime. The government know that only one trade union is opposing their diabolical plans. We will continue to fight for our members and never give in to bullying tyrants. Resist, defy, do not comply. Resist, defy, do not comply. Resist, defy, do not comply. Thank you, everyone.